now we're going to turn our attention to looking at an export subsidy, but in the large country scenario. So the big difference here, of course, is that if you're a large country, then your quantity of exports is going to impact the world price. So now instead of having a horizontal import demand curve, we see that from the home country's perspective, they're facing a downward sloping import demand curve. So we're going to go ahead and do the you know, kind of same procedure here for analysis. Right? And you'll see that as a recurring theme. Right? We approach each of these different scenarios. You know, we analyze them in a similar fashion. It's just the setup will give us a you know, different setup will give you somewhat different conclusions. So we start off with our, our world price, PW, which is where the import demand and export supply curves intersect. I draw that price back into our domestic graph, and we can see the quantities supplied and demanded. Now, again, we're going to put in an export subsidy. So what is that going to do? Well, it's going to shift the export supply curve down. And so here is our export supply curve. with the subsidy. And now what is this going to do? Again, it's going to put downward pressure, in this case, on the world price. Okay? And because, as I said just a minute ago, you, know, you increase your supply, you're going to affect the world price. And think about just basic supply and demand analysis. You supply more, that's going to put downward pressure on the price. So now here is our New world price at PW star. I'll go ahead and draw that price across. But I want you to pay real close attention to the price that's actually received by these firms. So you say, well, why, you know, why would firms be willing to sell more at a lower price? Well, it's because the price that these domestic producers are getting when they export is actually given by PW star plus the subsidy. Right? You've got to add the subsidy back in here. Remember that the subsidy is just the, the vertical distance here between the two supply curves. Right? We've shifted the supply curve down by the amount of the subsidy. So what the producers actually get when they export is PW star plus S. We'll draw that price across. And, and we have that price there. And again, you, you want to imagine a scenario where the home country government is also going to put a tariff in place on imports to ensure that the domestic price matches what the home country producers are getting when they export to the world market. So the domestic price is going to go up to PWS, PW star plus S here as well. Okay. So what does that mean for our supply and demand? Quantities, well, right, our quantity supplied goes up. Quantity demanded goes down. So again, let's go ahead and track the changes in our surpluses here. So for the consumer surplus, right, just as before, right, because the price has increased, they'll end up losing these areas A and B. Right, the area right here to the left of the demand curve, it's being reflected as right. they lose A because while they continue to consume those units of the good, they're paying a higher price. And B is the lost consumer surplus that comes from the fact that they're no longer consuming those units of the good between QD0 and QD1 that used to generate consumer surplus. So again, consumers are losing A and B. Producers, of course, will once again gain. And again, we see that their gain is A, B, C, right? because it's the area above above the supply curve between the two prices, the original world price and the new world price with the subsidy. And finally, we've got to track 
the government's cost in terms of implementing this program. So again, you need to keep track of what is the government, right, what are they paying on? Well, now the subsidy, remember, the subsidy is the difference between the new world price and the world price plus the subsidy here. So this is the subsidy per unit. And they're paying it over every unit that's being exported. So now if we add in, I right, add back our, our area D there, and now we're also going to add at this area E. That's the lower half, roughly speaking, of this rectangle. It's between QD, QD1, QS1, and PW star and PW star plus S. Now you've got this rectangle is the total subsidy cost. Right, so the subsidy cost is B, C, D, and that whole area E, right, which goes all the way out to the ends there. So if we add that back in, right, then, and remember, this is a, we put a minus sign on here because it's the cost of running this subsidy program. B, C, D, and E. So what is the net effect? Well, once again, this A and B that the consumers lose are really just a transfer to the producers. C is a gain for the producers and surplus, but that's coming at the expense of the taxpayers. So once again, we're left with our consumption and production distortions, but now we're also adding in this extra loss of E. Because what is E? E is this part of the government's cost of implementing the export subsidy that nobody's picking up domestically. Right? Nobody's picking that up. So the question is, well, what, what happens to this E? Is it, it must be going somewhere. And it is, but it's not accruing to anyone here in the home country. So let's go, go take a look here in our world market. Okay. As we can see, right, we've got this, our losses of B and D, which are also reflected in here. Right, so there's our, our dead weight loss at our B and D. That's in our home country graph is this triangle in here. So there's our B and D. Right. Now where do you see the cost of the subsidy? In this case, and more importantly, where do we see actually the other areas that we don't have right, in our, 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 our domestic graph here? Right? So the A, B, C, those, you know, those are the areas that, uh, or A and C are the areas that are just transferred from one group to another. But where can we see this, this area E? Well, E is just all of this. And in this graph, it's this rectangle down here. So what's happening with, with all of that? Well, who's getting this lower price? Who's benefiting from this? Well, the foreign consumers are. Right? So you can think about this, right? Look at that import demand curve. Right? Foreign consumers also get consumer surplus by buying our goods. And so for them, right, the consumer surplus goes from being this triangle right here, and initially they would be getting all of this. Now when the price, the world price falls to PW star, we're adding in this area that we'll label E prime. 
which is down here. Right? So E prime is all of this. And this triangle down here, we'll call that F, that's the part of, of E that doesn't accrue to anyone. So there's actually an additional, an additional dead weight loss when we're thinking in global terms right, on top of the home country's dead weight loss. So the total global dead weight loss is equal to the domestic, the home country's dead weight loss of B and D plus that area F. Right? Now from a foreign, from the foreign countries, right, from the importing countries' perspective, this is actually a welfare improving policy because their consumers are better off because they now get to buy our goods at a cheaper price. So what our export subsidy is actually doing is subsidizing foreign consumers. Now next what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a more general production subsidy in the small country case and see how that compares in welfare terms to our more specific export subsidy.